spring story with us, and uh, we'll be watching to see what's in store for next year. Great. For now, we're going to go to the Royal Botanical Gardens, which just recently launched its international sculpture collection. Since starting this project, um, the question that I get asked the most is, why are you doing this? And uh, I guess first, I've always been inspired by, uh, by art and by public sculpture. And whether the, the process, the creative process was in business or in art, it's always inspired me to do more and to, to reach out and try to stretch and find new ways to do things. I have a personal interest in art. I have a personal interest in sculpture. And when traveling to various parts of the world, I've always been inspired by what I've seen. Whether it's in uh, the Leo Mole uh, Sculpture Garden in Winnipeg, uh, the fantastic works in uh, Rome and Florence, in uh, the absolutely awe-inspiring works in Barcelona. Um, no matter where you go, uh, New York, Boston, uh, Washington, many places we've been, Puerto Vallarta, public uh, sculpture is always there and it's always resonated with, with me. And so uh, I thought, what better way than to bring what I'm passionate about here. everybody thanks for coming out this is um, a work that I did with a bunch of friends of mine so we've been working as a collective for quite a few years now um, basically I've been making stuff with scrap metal so the steel that you see here is all recycled steel except for the plates because the engineers insisted on having structurally sound um, and then the aluminum is uh, something I've been working more with lately we're not we don't actually paint any of the aluminum we just take whatever colors we can find from the scrapyard and then carve off the the paint to reveal the image and so the uh, the image is based on a story that I heard about I think everybody's heard about um, in China how they they lost uh, their bees in a, a region because of pesticide use and toxins uh, to the environment and because this one farm in particular that was growing pears that were a traditional um, product of that area they did not want to walk away from their farm and so they came up with this idea that they would act as the bees they would collect all the pollen process it and then very painstakingly take the pollen and dab each one of the blossoms in these fields literally millions of blossoms that they would be doing and for me this was such a strong story because it it not only talks about the importance of the environment and uh, how our actions affect it but the positive slant was that if we act as stewards and we sort of um, do things that seem un undoable uh, that there's a real potential to help help and uh, play a, a role ladies and gentlemen can I introduce you to the sculptor and uh, and his muse if I can if I can call well, her that I'll yeah, let you. Thank you. <laughs> there you go so it's the husband sculptor. and wife team um, both sculptors Bob and Joe Wilfong who've joined us from well you've been on the road but your your home base is Washington State it is. Washington State. Clarkston Washington yeah. talk a little bit about how you achieve these colors yes the the colors of my artwork are all traditional well, they aren't traditional colors, but they're true patinas. You know, what I do with that is I use acids at different temperatures, and it actually forces the bronze to change color. Uh, once we achieve the colorations that we have in the work, then we have to seal them so that they don't continue to oxidize. Otherwise, they become the blue, the, the, the browns and the greens and the, the different colors that you see with standard bronzes. And if they're maintained, properly just washed uh, occasionally relacquered so you keep them sealed this will be a permanent coloration of the design the colors are fantastic it sure is and they will stay like amazing. That. the only site in my opinion for this piece which is perfect Oh, <laughs> 
The ancient sounds of the woodwind instrument, the didgeridoo, tend to be associated with Australia, where it originates. But today, didgeridoos are played all over the world, including right here in downtown Dundas, where I'm at the Down to Earth shop, and I'm going to go learn how to play one. Let's go in. The Down to Earth shop is one of the only places in the area you can get an authentic didgeridoo, an ancient wind instrument that some people think might be one of the oldest instruments in the world. I'm here with Daryl Switzer, who's something of an expert on playing the didgeridoo, and he's going to tell us a little bit more about these amazing instruments. Well, the didgeridoo is a typical um, stick, so to say, made out of eucalyptus wood that's been hollowed out by termites, <coughs> and then it's been worked on on the inside uh, with chisels just to clean it up a little bit and then it's meant for playing as an instrument. How long have you been playing? I've been playing for just over three years now. How long did it take you to master? So it didn't take me very long to actually get the knack of it. Uh, I think the first time I put a dig to my lips I was able to make a sound. Huh. Now to get going on everything I'm always learning. There's like I wouldn't say I'm a an advanced player even. Like, so you're always, always learning something new every day. So how many, what kinds of didgeridoos can you, can you get here at? Uh... So we pride ourselves on our eucalyptus ones, um, made out of blood, wood, or woolly butt. Um, I make them myself, and really those are the only two that we'll get in. So the ones I bring in myself, um, I find from fallen trees and forests. Um, I brought in some yucca, or yucca stalks. Um, made a couple of digits out of yucca stalks. Maple, whatever I get my hands on. So can someone just YouTube how to play this? Is there a strategy that people can use? I YouTubed how to play yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, YouTube was my best friend for about a year and a half. And then I started taking online lessons. And then it totally took over my life. So how often do people come in here looking for information? Or? Uh, funny enough, they come in quite frequently. And we have monthly meetups and workshops on how to play, whether you never played before at all or if, you know, if you're an advanced player. Everybody comes just to share information and learn. And it's new faces every time. Cool. Well, I am not terribly musical, but... I was never a musician. <laughs> I'm not a musician by trade, so... Could you show me how to, how to get a sound out sure. of that? So we'll give you okay. this bad boy here. Okay, it's fairly heavy. So and the, it's got the eucalyptus digits are really, they got some weight to them, yep. and they're waxed with uh, yeah. beeswax huh. for the mouthpiece. Okay. So that's interesting. So it's just a raw, natural instrument. Um, cool. So to make the sound, you want to vibrate your lips. That seems easy enough. It seems easy enough, but to sustain that vibration for at least 10 seconds, that's what you gotta first learn. So let's try this. Okay, so in the dig, you ready for this? Okay, no big deal, so... So it's a little bit tighter, <laughs> a little bit tighter of an embouchure, and I think you're going to be a pro. It petered off there a little bit. How do you sustain breath while so you're doing this? So that's circle breathing. So you're uh, breathing in while breathing out at the same time, okay. which is physically impossible, <laughs> so it's just trick breathing. Okay. So are there any health benefits associated with all this breathing and breath work? Yes, the didgeridoo, the reason why I got into it for was it's an alternative to wearing the mask when you have sleep apnea. So instead of just masking your situation, you're actually building the muscles that are essentially collap collapsing when you're having a sleep apnea. So you're strengthening your airways, really. That's fascinating. There's meditation. There's all kinds of different things that health benefits from playing and listening to it played. Yeah. Okay, so let's try that again. So start getting it at the end there. Somehow I think I'm a ways off from where you are. What are you doing 
to get that sound out of it. So the, the high pitched sounds is my voice. So yeah. once you start getting a drone down, uh, you start throwing your vocals through, making animal noises, so to speak. So, uh, you know, Australian animals would be like dingo barks or kookaburras or alligators or, you know, tree frogs. Oh. Um, in each one, it's if you don't have a dig to your mouth, you look like an idiot. But you're just saying really loud, high-pitched ka's or ta's or da's or cuckoo's, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes the. <laughs> I don't know what kind of an animal that was. <laughs> <laughs> a moose in the forest. Well, this has been a fantastic introduction to the didgeridoo. Um, if anyone's interested in learning more about them, uh, come and check out the selection here and the other amazing products uh, in downtown Dundas at the Down to Earth shop. Thanks so much, Daryl. No problem. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.